Is this you? I can't even get bro and there I go like what the hell? If so, then this video is for you. What's up YouTube? My name's Josh and today I'm going to be sharing 10 tips to help new players survive Armored Core. And hopefully you don't take the number 10 too seriously. Tip number zero is less a tip on playing the games but more on how to play the games. I've seen copies of Armored Core for up to $300 online. So if you don't feel like dropping that kind of money, you should know that every Armored Core game can be emulated. Duck Station works great for the PS1 games, PCSX2 Nightly version will play the PS2 games no problem, and RPCS3 will run the 4th gen games, but you have to skip the cutscenes or the game will freeze on the most recent update, that is, unless you play on the older version of emulator that I linked in the description. The only games you can't run easily on emulator are 5 and Verdict Day. I can't tell you where to get the ROMs to play the games themselves, but Google is your best friend. Also, if you want to play the 4th gen games with their latest updates, go check out the pinned comments of 4th gen chat over at the Armored Core 2.0 Discord server. They can also answer any questions related to Armored Core or emulation, but as I said, please check the pinned comments first. Tip number one is you can rebind your controls in the earlier PS2 games. Feel free to skip ahead to the timestamp if you're not interested in this one. In the Armored Core game itself, go to System, then Options, then go to Key Assign. Here you can remap the controls. You can copy the layout on screen to use the D-pad for movement, the right face buttons for camera, and bumpers and triggers for actions like boosting, using your offhand, firing, and switching weapons. That's all you can do in-game, but if you're using an emulator you can go one step further to get the left and right stick working, making it similar to what you'd expect from a modern game. To do this, be in windowed mode on the PCSX2 emulator, click on Settings, Controllers, controller port 1. For people that haven't already mapped their controller or just want to reset their controller, you can click on the automatic mapping, which will set all the settings for your controller back to default. Next, go to settings at the top left and set every button's dead zone to 10%. They're set to zero automatically. This will stop your buttons from constantly being pressed when you finish the rebinding. Next, go back to the bindings tab. Since we're still using the in-game controlling settings, we're gonna duplicate the actions to work on the sticks. First go to D-pad up and click to assign it. Now hold left stick up on the controller and while you're holding that up, press D-pad up. This will assign both the stick and the D-pad button. Now you just need to repeat this process for every direction on the D-pad. When that's done, we just need to do it on the right side. Click the triangle option and then just hold the right stick up and click triangle or Y if you're using an Xbox controller. And once again, repeat the process for all the face buttons. When that's over, there's still one big problem. There's no leniency on the sticks, so if you try to turn in a direction, you'll also look up and down at the same time. Same thing with the left stick. If you try to walk straight, it'll register a strafe. To fix this, we have to add in dead zones to a few of the buttons, so follow these steps. In controller settings, hold shift on your keyboard and left mouse click the triangle button. Next, turn the sensitivity down to 50% and the dead zones up to 25%. Now close the pop-up window. Then repeat the same process for the cross button. Shift click, sensitivity 50%, dead zone 25%. Now to fix our strafing problem, we're gonna do the same thing to the D-pad left and D-pad right buttons. This next part isn't gonna make much sense until we get to a later tip, but go to macros, Click on trigger and select an extra button you have that isn't on the PS2. For example, my PS5 controller has a microphone mute button. You can also use the PlayStation button or the Xbox button if it doesn't open the Xbox game bar. If you have a modded controller, you can use any of the extra thousand buttons you have. Next, we're going to check mark D-pad left, D-pad right, along with triangle and cross. I'll explain why you did that later on in the video. And now that that's done, you can enjoy the game with up-to-date controls. 
The movement's only eight axis, so no matter what you do, it'll probably feel a little stiff. And since there's no sensitivity with looking up and down, it's just gonna constantly give the max input. It's definitely usable though, and I'm sure in less than an hour you'll get used to it. If anyone out there has a better setting for the dead zones and the sensitivity, let us know down in the comments. I'll make sure to pin the comment after testing it out for myself to see if it works. And now we're gonna get into tips for the games themselves. Tip number two is progress through the arena first. Every arena other than Last Raven is free to participate in. There's no repair cost or ammo cost, so you can get used to playing the game and earn some money for upgrades right at the start. Tip number three is look up a hidden parts guide for the game you're playing. Without this information, you wouldn't know about things like this hidden radar hiding above a destructible roof in Armored Core 2's test mode, or these heavy legs you get in Armored Core 3 for breaking a certain amount of targets in the test mode. Even if you don't use these hidden parts, you can always sell them for extra credits. Tip number four is you can sell your starter parts. You don't get much use out of the radars in the beginning of the games, and your starter weapons are straight garbage. In most of the games, you can also sell your core parts, but having better weapons and a higher energy output generator and high performance boosters will get you a lot farther. Tip number five is knowing parts buy and sell for the same price. So if you weren't happy with a purchase or just want to test out some different weapons, you can rest easy knowing you didn't lose any money. This goes for every Armored Core game except Nexus and Last Raven. In those games, whenever you go out on a mission, the part becomes used and loses value. You can still go into the test mode with it and it won't count, so just keep that in mind. Tip number six is an important one. Use energy weapons on missions. They have absolutely no ammo cost up until Armored Core 4, and even then it seems like they're cheaper than solid weapons. The trade-off is it costs energy to fire, and it seems like they're not as deadly as ballistic weapons, but there's some optional parts you can buy in the shop to make up for that. Armored Core is all about not losing money, so the more money you save, the faster you can completely build your AC with whatever you want to put on it. So yeah, energy weapons definitely help. Tip number seven is machine guns are good in all the Armored Core games. Even when they were nerfed in Nexus, they were still more powerful than most of the other options. So yeah, if you're really, really struggling and you can't get good, try one of the better machine guns. The Thousand Rounder is a good bet most of the time, but I'd really suggest experimentation. Tip number eight is you can press the triangle or Y while in the shop or garage to expand the stats. You should be using this menu when it comes to deciding what you want. I know it's a lot to look at, but with enough time, it'll help you make a more informed decision. Also in all Armored Core games after three, you can press the select button and get a more detailed description of an exact stat, kind of like the Souls games. Tip number nine is in Armored Core 3 and all following games, you can drop your parts on the ground. This actually changes your stats right then and there, so you'll lose weight making you go faster and lose the energy drain of your weapons, causing you to be more energy efficient. To do this in Armored Core 3 and Silent Line with default controls, you hold down all the face buttons on your controller, then rather click the left stick down to drop your extensions or press the weapon switch button to drop whatever weapon you're currently using or press the button that activates your offhand weapon to drop your offhand weapon. If you've rebound your controls in a way I haven't showed you, you'll have to hold both strafing buttons, both buttons to look up and down, and then switch your weapon, activate your extension, or use your offhand weapon. If you followed my controller remapping from earlier in the video, you can just hold down whatever button you used for your macro. Then, as I said before, switch your weapon, use your offhand, or activate your extensions. In Armored Core Nexus and all following PS2, games, you could drop your parts by holding triangle or Y, then fire your main weapon, or fire your offhand weapon, or activate your extensions. For and for answer, how you do this is you hold down your weapon switch buttons, then just fire whichever weapon you want to drop, or activate your flares. Five and Verdict Day, I kind of forget. I think you hold a button down on the D-pad, then fire your weapon, same as before. Dropping your weapons is something that's never mentioned in any of the Armored Core games, so yeah, knowing this tip is pretty handy. Tip number 10 is save constantly. Even the 4th gen games on the PS3 
didn't have autosave, so this is something you want to make a habit of. Every time you finish a mission, save. Every few arena fights, save. Also, you can reload your save at any time, so if you weren't happy with your performance in a mission, well, just imagine it didn't happen. A lot of Armored Core games' difficulty comes from not knowing which equipment works well in a mission, so don't get mad, just reload and do better, or use customization to your advantage. And editing this in, I almost forgot about one of the most important tips. If you're really having problems or just want to have more fun with the game, look into getting Human Plus. It was a feature you could get in Armored Core 1 and Armored Core 2, and with your save files, you could carry it over to Armored Core Project Phantasma and Master of Arena, and Armored Core 2 Another Age. This will let you do interesting stuff like fire your back cannons while moving around if you're using bipedal legs, and also increase your energy regeneration and let you throw a beam from your laser blade. As I said, you could get this in Armored Core 1 and Armored Core 2 and then use those save files to transfer it into the direct sequels, and this later turned into OP Intensify in Armored Core 3 which you get at the end of the game, and you have to do a bunch of cool side objectives to unlock its power, and you could transfer that into Silent Line with the save data. I feel like a lot of tryhards in the community hate on people for using this, but I actually do find it to be the most fun way to play the game. And since I like you so much, here's a few quick bonus tips. Understand that in the PS1 and the PS2 games, there's head functions. A biosensor will let you lock on any organic enemies. Noise cancellation, or later known as versus ECM, will resist lock-on interference or increase the recovery. Some heads also have detailed maps, which after exploring the area, it'll save that map data to your map. And also, you'll be able to see some objectives on the map. And yeah, other heads might not be as detailed, or some of them just don't have have a map function at all. Make sure to look at the head functions is all I'm trying to say. I left out a few important ones, but I'm sure you'll be able to find them. Also in the earlier games, optional parts exist, so check out the shop and use some of them. And lastly, if you're having issues with water in the earlier PS2 games, try out the hover legs. Hopefully this video helped with surviving Armored Core. Hit the like button, and if you have any other tips, leave them in the comments below. Maybe we can make a part two. I think if I do make another video like this, it's going to be on the most important stats in the game, as that's a crucial component to all these Armored Core games. But yeah, thanks for watching, have a nice day.